Welcome to Bayou Time. I'm Jacob DeGate, and it's my pleasure now to be joined by Trooper Ross Brennan of the Louisiana State Police, Troop C. Thank you very much for joining us. Appreciate having you on. Oh, glad to be here. All right, it's now coming up. Uh, it's already here. Hard to believe it, it, it's already almost Thanksgiving time. Uh, holidays are here. Of course, that brings up a lot of safety issues. Yeah. Uh, can you tell me, you know, a little bit something about that, some tips that you have out there for the public? Yeah. So, say police, what we're urging right now is just personal safety and driving safety out there. We want everybody to have a good holiday season, everybody to make it to their destination safely and without incident. So even before you leave to go to your destination, maybe leave a little bit early. Try to avoid those crowds, that traffic on the highway. Um, if everybody kind of leaves at the same times, typically around New Orleans area, maybe Lafayette, Baton Rouge, a lot of congestion that occurs, all right? So maybe if you have a destination, grandma's house, somewhere, somewhere that you're going uh, for Thanksgiving day, maybe leave an hour or two early, help beat those crowds. Um, before you even leave, a good idea is just go around your vehicle and make sure everything's good. Um, check the fluids inside the vehicle, make sure that radiator fluid's good, uh, windshield washer fluid's good, brake fluid's good. Um, also check the tires, especially now after the hurricane, they got a lot of debris, traffic mm -hmm. on the road, uh, different things like that, nails on the highway. Make sure that you don't have a nail in your tire. You don't want to get on the highway and experience a flat that can cause delays later on. Now you're trying to figure out where I'm going to get my tire fixed or patched. Um, speaking of spare tires and getting, a, if you get a flat, make sure that your spare tire is good. There's a lot of instances where we go to stop a car with a flat tire and we're like, where's your spare? Oh, it's in the trunk. But whenever we put it on the car, they realize that it's flat. So it's a good idea now before you get on the highway, do a little check around the vehicle, make sure that all the tires are good, including your spare. That way, if something does happen, you have to change the tire, you have a backup readily available. Um, another good idea, especially if you're traveling alone, Maybe let some loved ones know what your route is, wherever you're going, uh, whether it's out of state or across the state or different things like that. That way, if something does happen, let's say maybe you don't have cell service, different things. Uh, if you're not showing up at your time like you said you would show up, maybe they can kind of go back and retrace that route and maybe figure out where you're at in case your vehicle breaks down, different things. Um, also develop maybe like a little emergency kit inside the vehicle. Um, so you get caught in maybe a traffic jam, different things like that. You might not be able to get to that exit readily or quickly. Um, maybe have some snacks, some food in there, some water, different things just kind of hold you over, especially you got young ones in the car too. Uh, just something to kind of buy them some time until you can get to that next exit and they can get a meal in them. Um, different things like that, just kind of plan ahead. Um, and especially with the holidays, I mean, Thanksgiving, but also Black Friday's coming up. A lot of people like to go out and Black Friday shop. And that's also a time that criminals use opportunities whenever people are relaxed. So whenever you're doing your shopping, make sure that you kind of hide those valuables inside the vehicle. You don't want, you know, to go out and spend all this money on somebody's gift for you to come back mm -hmm. to the car and it's not there. So make sure you hide those valuables inside the vehicle and also make sure that you lock those doors. A lot of these criminals are opportunists. So they might be walking through the parking lot, just pulling on door handles mm -hmm. and seeing what vehicles unlock, which one's locked. So if they walk up to a car and it's unlocked, they're probably going to go through and see if they can get anything out of it that's worth the, uh, any value. So just kind of make sure, like I said, hide those valuables, lock those doors, because if we can prevent the opportunity even being there, we can prevent these crimes from even happening. So just kind of plan ahead and think about what you're going to do, uh, whether it's before you even get on the highway or if you're out about shopping on Black Friday, different things like that. Okay, and also with the holidays, you know, oftentimes, especially in South Louisiana, that means a, a lot of people, you know, drink a little bit, but yeah. uh, sometimes they also make that poor decision to get behind the wheel. Um, of course, I guess that's something that people have to be out on the lookout for when they're on the roads. Yeah, well. so if you are planning to consume any alcohol, we say it all the time, any alcohol at whatever event, just try to plan ahead before you even go out what your ride home is going to be. Do not get behind the wheel if you have been drinking and do not get into a vehicle with another driver who is impaired. Um, before you even go out, think about a designated driver, somebody who's going to be able to drive home who's going to be sober. We have so many options now. We have taxis, we have ride share apps, we have Uber, we have Lyft in our area. Um, whether you go outside the area like New Orleans, Baton Rouge, they have even more options, right? So just try to plan ahead before you even go out. We want to make sure that everybody gets home safe. We don't want to have no empty seats at the dinner table whenever Thanksgiving comes or Christmas time comes because somebody made a poor choice behind the wheel, especially this past week and with all the tragic deaths that we had. And basically alcohol is the factor in all of them for the most part. Um, so we just want to make people have good decisions behind the wheel. And like I said, if you are going to drive, uh, do not consume any alcohol and try to plan ahead before you go. We want people to make those good decisions. Okay. And something else that, uh, a lot of times when people get on the road, especially when they have family, you have young ones in the yeah. car, uh, you know, under 13 or 
what, can you tell them for those out there who may not know or whether they're on the borderline of, of what the child's uh, car seat uh, regulations are and what type of laws and, and how they can uh, make sure those car seats are, are set securely and properly? So the different manufacturers, they have different requirements. Some, so many weights, some, so many heights to be in that certain seat right there. Um, so a good idea is just kind of look at your manufacturer recommendations on the side of the seat and then see how much your child weighs, how tall they are. And make sure they're not kind of outgrowing that seat. Um, they got different styles, convertible, forward facing, rear facing, different things like that. Um, a good option is, is that if you're unsure, State Police Troop C right there in gray um, by Highway 90 is a fitting station. So if you just call ahead, make sure that somebody's there, you can actually come by, bring your child's seat. We can have somebody properly show you how to install it inside the vehicle. That way you know it's installed properly. You also know that's the right seat for that child. Um, like I said, uh, different seats are a little bit different, so it's kind of a case-by-case -case basis whether that child's for that seat. But if you just want to make sure, double check, just come on by Troop C Monday through Friday during the daytime hours, mm -hmm. and we'll hopefully have somebody there. Just call ahead, um, have somebody there who'll be able to install that seat for you, make sure it's installed properly, and also show you how to install it. Uh, unfortunately, this week, uh, past several weeks, we've had uh, some fatal accidents, uh, uh, some unfortunate accidents on the roads out there um, can you talk a little bit about that and what's what are some uh, safety things that are y'all doing to help prevent those yeah so just this past weekend in our troop c area i mean nine people lost their lives on our highways and about half of the crashes uh, involved an impaired driver so what we're doing is state police troop c we invited all the local sheriff departments in our troop c area and even st charles parish which is actually part of troop b but uh, St. James, St. John's Parish, Assumption Parish, Terrebonne, Lafourche. Um, we invited the district attorneys from those parishes also. And what we're planning on next week is coming together and having this meeting to kind of have a brainstorming uh, moment to kind of come up with ideas and how can we combat these uh, drunk drivers out there or these aggressive drivers that are causing a lot of these crashes. I mean, we've seen a lot of us since the hurricane, they have a ton more drivers in our area, just people displaced, you got contract workers, uh, construction workers, different things like that. So um, a lot of these out of towners, they don't really know this area around here, um, especially with all the lights out and different things like that. So we're seeing a lot of influx and crashes, just one, because of the traffic, and then two, people don't really know the area around here. So what this meeting is gonna do is just come up with some ideas is it can maybe extra patrols different things like that education um, kind of plan a, a route we're going to take is how we're going to like I said combat these drunk drivers out there these aggressive drivers try to make this uh, whole community down here a lot better safer place to be on the roadways um, as always I mean Louisiana State Police we're always looking for impaired drivers one I mean nearly half of our crashes that we worked last year that were fatalities, they involved alcohol. So, I mean, we always preach the message, but it still is a major factor, especially down here in South Louisiana. Um, a lot of our crashes involve impaired drivers or alcohol. Um, but like I said, distracted and aggressive drivers. I mean, whenever people speed or whenever they drive distracted, uh, basically what they're doing is they're limiting their ability to react in a, a situation. So there might be a road hazard, but if they're so distracted by their phone or if they're mm -hmm. going too fast, not going to be able to react to that situation. Plus, not going to be able to come to a stop. The faster you go, the longer it takes you to stop. So you might be able to avoid a crash if you're going the speed limit. But if you're going like 10, 15 over the speed limit, then you might not be able to slow down in time and cause a crash to happen. Um, so in addition to impaired drivers, a lot of our crashes are distracted and aggressive driving. Um, also going to be looking out there for uh, uh, people who aren't wearing seatbelts. We are participating in the NHTSA's uh, Click It or Ticket campaign that's happening during the Thanksgiving holiday. So we want everybody to know that no matter if it's day or night, every occupant inside the vehicle is supposed to be wearing a seatbelt. Um, seatbelt is supposed to be worn uh, across your shoulder, across your chest, and across your pelvis, not underneath your arm, not behind your back, different things like that. It's meant to be worn that certain way because if you do get in a crash, a seatbelt's your greatest chance of reducing injury inside of a motor vehicle crash. Um, so when you're wearing it the correct way, you're wearing it the uh, proper, uh, proper way, it works in conjunction with the airbag and helps reduce those injuries involved there. Um, so we're all going to be out there, us as well other law enforcement agencies all across the state. We're going to be looking for people who aren't wearing seatbelts, part of that click of their ticket campaign. Um, also, look, if you're out there and about, especially Thanksgiving coming up, people traveling around, um, as you're planning your route, go to 511.org, uh, 511LA.org. 
Um, so basically, when you're planning your route, it kind of gives you an idea of whether some road closures, different construction areas, kind of gives you a little bit of head time to prep um, and think about what route you are going to take. There's also an app you can download, Louisiana 511 app. If you are traveling about on the highways, download that smartphone app. Uh, same thing, it shows you road constructions, different uh, traffic closures, uh, whatever you might come across. Um, if you are driving on the highway, you see a road hazard or you see a distracted, uh, aggressive, or an impaired driver on the highway, what you can do is dial star LSP, star 577. No matter what part of the state you're in, what it'll do is it'll connect you with our nearest dispatcher, who will then in turn connect you to our nearest troop. And hopefully either us or sheriff's office or PD, somebody can get out there, mm -hmm. maybe stop this impaired driver. Because we had so many tragic accidents just over this past weekend. So if we can stop these aggressive drivers and impaired drivers and distracted drivers um, before they even cause a crash to happen, maybe we can have people come home, especially during the holidays. We want everybody to be able come home for the holidays so if we can kind of reduce these crashes uh and stop these drivers before they could even hit somebody or take somebody's life or cause injury or an accident that's what we're out there especially during the holiday period and you make a a good point earlier you know even though you're always supposed to be on the lookout not be driving distracted and everything but with the damage uh you know that this the infrastructure is sustained from hurricane ida it's going to take a long time to get everything back to just wh where it was before and, and some of those safety measures that that normally were in place you know such as your lights or, mm -hmm. or blinking lights or or just more lighting in the area other things debris on the road just just uh, there's more hazards out there that you, you don't have that extra yep. uh that time to where distracting driving really could you know you know come in uh harm for for people out there yeah definitely now is not the time to be distracted or speeding around especially like you said there's I mean they still got debris on the side of the highway in some areas lights are not fully functioning as far as like uh, uh street lights illuminating the road so if you are going to drive right now now is the best time to pay full attention just because we have so many hazards and so many different people on the highway so I would say, why don't you set yourself up for success? You know, you set yourself up for failure whenever you do text and drive or drive distracted or speed, and drive aggressively. So, like you say, if you want to go home in the evening and go home safely without an incident occurring, your best chance is one, drive defensively, and also just slow those speeds down, pay attention outside your vehicle, because we want everybody to get home. We want to avoid these tragedies from happening. Certainly, certainly. We want everybody to have uh, home for the holidays, have, have a good holiday season, no tragedies, uh, no more. Unfortunately, we've had some, but uh, hopefully uh, the rest could be limited. And we thank you for coming on, and hopefully the public uh, will take your warning seriously out there. Yeah, appreciate it. All right, stay tuned for more right here on HTV.